Lone Ranger. Yes, Mr. Dexter. This new rifle is everything you said it is. Even better. Well, I've been working on it a long time, Mr. Van Baden. Got it just about perfected now. I'm grateful to you, Mr. Garth, for bringing it to my attention. I know you're always looking for the newest and the best in firearms. When I heard about this gun of Dexter's, I talked him into letting you have a look at it. Certainly glad you did. Have you had many offers, Mr. Dexter? Well, as a matter of fact, quite a few. But I figured I wouldn't make up my mind about them until after I'd had my design registered and patented. Isn't that a little dangerous, showing off a weapon you haven't got a patent on? The patent will be taken care of shortly. I've arranged for that. Mr. Dexter, let me go straight to the point. If I want something very badly, I spare no expense to get it. What is your price for the rights to that weapon? Why, well, I don't rightly know, Mr. Van Baden. Reckon I'll sell to the highest bidder. Well, in that case, I meet your highest bidder and add 10,000. What's your answer? Well, you're sure mighty anxious to get this rifle. Uh, what's the name of the company you're representing? Uh, Mr. Garth mentioned it, but I've forgotten. Atlantis Munitions. It's one of the biggest in Europe. Oh, European company, eh? Well, you didn't tell me that, Garth. Well, a European company that pays in good American dollars. What's wrong with that? I'm sorry, Mr. Van Baden, but I'm afraid we can't make a deal. I don't understand him. I thought you Americans always sold to the highest bidder. The smart ones do. What's wrong, Dexter? I love my country, Mr. Garth. And there are too many wars in Europe. I should hate to think that someday this rifle might be used and turned against the very people it was meant to benefit. You don't seem to understand, Mr. Dexter. I must have that rifle at any cost. It was foolish, Mr. Dexter. Very foolish. You forced me to acquire those designs. Where are they? You'll never find out from me. I'm sure we will. You said those drawings were not patented yet, so they must be still in your house, correct? Come on, speak up. Where are they? I fear Mr. Dexter is not the man to respond to violence. We have to look for it ourselves. What about him? There's only one more copy left, and it's safely locked up in there. We can't very well let Mr. Dexter dispose of it somewhere else, can we? Yeah. I see what you mean. <coughs> Too bad. A more cooperative man could have been useful to me. And now I believe we have business at Mr. Dexter's house. How far do you say this from here? A few miles. I was wrong, Tunnel. I thought I heard someone calling. You're right, Kimasabe. I'm from over there. It's a miracle he's still alive, Tunnel. Get some medicine from the saddlebags while I pull out this knife. Tunnel, this knife is rather unusual. More like a stiletto. Not often seen in this country. Don't let this mask frighten you. We're your friends. Are you trying to talk? Can you tell us who you are, sir? Dexter. Dexter. Sam Dexter. Sam Dexter, the inventor? Who did this to you? Von, Von Baden. Von Baden, eh? It's a name I haven't heard before. A foreigner, man named Garth with him. Foreigner? Tell me that may be the man we're after. Listen closely, Mr. Dexter. Tell us if he fits this description. A partly gray-haired man, about 40, six feet tall, courtly mannered with a slight accent. That's him, all right. Uh, what else does it say? Identity unknown. Uses many different names and titles. This man is a foreign agent assigned to the Western United States and working against the best interests of our country. It is vital that he be captured alive. Mr. Dexter, we're trying to help the United States Marshal capture this man. The government wants to ask him some mighty important questions. Oh, 
Him lose plenty blood. Not good him lie here. We'd better make a litter. Wait. Get to my house quick. Uh, no time for that. Uh, road past Twin Forks. Trouble there? Von Baden. What's he after? Uh, design for new gun. He wants to steal it. Who has that design now? My daughter's taking it east. Von Baden may hum. Oh, Bonnie, what have you done? That's what they always do with secret documents. Here's a piece for you and a piece for you. Now, we each hide our piece in a different place. That'll make it three times as difficult for a hold-up man to find what he's after. I swear, child, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. I think it's rather romantic. Where are you going to hide yours, Miss Prim? Oh, no, we mustn't tell each other. That way, no matter how much the bandits threaten and torture us, we can't give each other away. Bandits and torture and handsome men to sweep us off our feet. I've had about enough. Come on, girls, get out in that carriage. That's Dexter's place over there. There's a carriage leaving it. Two girls and... and it looks like a chaperone. Yeah, here's two kids and his housekeeper. <laughs> Mr. Gass, they're always so direct, so impetuous. No, we shan't stop them now, not yet. We'll search Mr. Dexter's house first. If we find what we want there, we needn't inconvenience the young ladies. You're doing it the hard way. The young ladies can probably tell us what's hidden. And I can make them talk easy. Oh, you Americans. Always violence, always force. Sometimes persuasion is much more effective. I don't like your methods, Von Baden. Too much pussyfooting around. Mr. Garth, I feel very well to take orders, not to give them. The house first. Is this where Mr. Dexter lives? That's right. He's not here now. Everybody gone but Wong. We'll wait. Me very busy. What do you want here? A piece of paper, my friend. I'm sure you'll want to tell us where it is. Hit Wong again. Don't be afraid, Wong. I won't hurt you. They're gone now, whoever they were. Can you tell me what they look like? One man, very well dressed. Another man, big, rough, used fisk. Did they get what they were after? <laughs> Try not to tell them. They look for paper in the house, not find them. The rough man hit me. Where is the paper, Wong? You can trust me. Mrs. Dexter's daughter, take paper, leave to catch a stagecoach. Did you tell those two men that? They forced me, twist my arm till hurt very much, then leave fast. I see. All those girls are in danger. I'm going after them. I want you to wait here. My Indian friend is bringing Mr. Dexter home. He's been hurt badly. Me wait. What time does the stage leave? It leaves in a half an hour. I'll get your luggage aboard. Come on, let's grab them. If we don't act fast, they'll be on the way to Kansas City. Do you suggest we seize them on the main street of this town and search them and their luggage in public view? If you don't let me stop them back at their house, we'd have what we want by now. I'm not concerned with ifs, Mr. Garth, but with facts. In a short while, the young ladies will be leaving town on that coach. If they're as stubborn and foolhardy as their father, they won't relinquish that paper so easily. What are you getting at? Something you Americans don't seem to understand that young ladies respond to gallantry much faster than to force. All right, so you want to be gallant. Well, you ain't got much time for it. I have all the time in the world, Mr. Garth. You see, I'll be riding on that coach myself. Yeah? Well, then how about paying me off? You won't be needing me anymore. On the contrary, Mr. Garth. I'll be needing you very badly. You see, you are going to give me the chance to be gallant. Now listen closely. You must help me take Mr. Dexter home. Why are you wearing disguise? I'm about to take a trip, Tannum, on a coach with three ladies. Mm, me not understand. The stagecoach is leaving town in a few minutes. I just saw it. Dexter's daughters will be on it. You think them ride into trouble? Yes, I'm almost sure of it. I saw a foreign gentleman buying a ticket to ride on the coach with them. A 
that Von Baden? I don't know. But the only way I can find out is to give him a chance to betray himself. Well, that plenty dangerous, Kimosabe. Him not like other outlaws we chase. Him use foreign tricks. I don't think he'll be suspicious of an old Civil War veteran going to an army reunion. Do you want me to ride with you? No, Toto. You follow behind with Silver. If anything happens that I can't handle, I'll drop you a signal somehow. You fire gun twice. Me come plenty fast. I'm not going to use my guns unless I absolutely have to. You remember what the letter said? It's vital be captured on Baden unharmed. We'd better get to town before that coach leaves. Come on. All aboard, ladies, for Kansas City. Allow me, madam. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. It is always a pleasure to assist three such charming young ladies. Oh. Most kind, Mr. Mr. Von Baden. Baron Paul Von Baden, at your service. Hey, a Baron. Oh. Thank you, Dr. Mammoth. Coach pulling out, all passengers aboard. Not by a long sight, mister. Make way for an old soldier. Howdy. Excuse me. Phew. Nearly missed the coach. You folks traveling far? Kansas City. Kansas City. The end of the line. Heading that way myself. I admire your courage, ladies, undertaking such a long and hazardous journey without a man to escort you. We can take care of ourselves. Besides, there's no danger. There's always danger when three such lovely ladies travel alone through uninhabited territory. Gentlemen's got a point there. Hope you ladies ain't carrying anything valuable like uh, money or jewels. And if we were, sir, it'd be none of your business. Be not afraid. If you allow me, I'll be honored to act as your protector. That's very kind, Baron. But I'm sure we won't need protecting. One never knows. In case you do, I'm rather a good shot if I have to be. That's right comforting, mister. Wasn't wearing these specs. Be a good shot myself. Well, hold on. Here we go. Well, the journey isn't this rough all the way. Afraid it will be, ma'am. Roads don't improve none. At least it'll keep us awake. Have you been in this country long, Baron? Long enough to be charmed by its beautiful scenery. Baron, eh? That's a mighty fancy title. What'd you do to earn it? You don't earn a title like that. You're born with it. You don't say. You reckon I don't hold much with titles a man don't earn for himself. You know, I rather agree with you. Really, Peg, you're being rude. Oh, not at all, ma'am. The young lady is not alone in her prejudice. Whoa! What is that? An outlaw. Keep down, ladies. I try to get him. Oh, sure hope you're a good shot, Baron. Don't worry, my friend. I'm one of the best in Europe. Are you ladies all right? Land sakes, I feel like I'm splitting apart the seams. I'll go back and take a look at that outlaw. There's a price on his head I can collect a reward. Don't take no chances. Keep your gun ready in case he's playing possum. The very idea, trying to hold up the stagecoach. What do you figure he was after? We're not carrying any gold, as far as I know. Oh, Peg, do you think... Bonnie, be quiet. What is it, ladies? If you're carrying something of particular value, all our lives might be in danger. It is only fair to let us know what it is, should we be attacked again. I think he's right, girls. We've got to tell him. Please, Miss Prynne. We don't know either of these gentlemen well enough to confide in them. 
Hasn't the Baron just saved our lives? That's all the confidence in him that I need. And besides, I don't think this old, old soldier is likely to cause any trouble with the Baron protecting us. Well, a man would think twice before exchanging shots with a sharpshooter like him. Miss Prynne's right, Pig. If that bandit was after Papa's drawings, we'd be the first person he'd search. They'd be much safer if the Baron carried them. I appreciate your confidence, Miss Bunny, but I have no idea what you're talking about. It, it's like this, Baron. The girl's father, Mr. Dexter, is an inventor. And before he left this morning... So we followed Bonnie's suggestion, and each of us hid a piece of the drawing. Oh, how clever of you ladies. And may I ask where you hid yours, ma'am? I've always been told that criminals never look in the obvious places. How right you are. Uh -huh. I would have never thought to open your fan. I agree with you, it's much safer with me. And now you, Miss Bonnie, what secret hiding place did you choose? I got the idea from the last novel I read. The heroine hid her jewels in here. Oh, how admirable. And you, Miss Peck? If you don't mind, Baron, I'll keep my third of the paper. Oh, don't be unreasonable, Peg. Supposing something happens to you? Supposing something happens to the Baron. Oh, no, that makes sense all right. You don't trust me, do you, Miss Peck? Should I, Baron? Don't be absurd, Peg. Can't you see he's a gentleman? He has perfect manners, if that's what you mean. Well, Baron... Looks like the young lady knows her own mind. Reckon you'll just have to keep your eye on two-thirds of that drawing. I'm afraid that's not enough. Why, Baron, what do you mean? I mean that I want it all. Oh. And may I remind you, sir, that if you make one move to help those ladies, it will be your last. I'm much faster and younger than you are. Reckon you got me, Baron. I don't aim for no gunplay. Peg, I don't understand. I do. Your precious Baron is the real outlaw we should have been watching for. Correct, Miss Peg. And now may I have your piece of drawing? Come, come, Miss Peg. Surely you aren't going to force me to harm you. Peg, give him the paper. You dropped something, Baron. Oh, no. There's a knife on the floor. Looks more like a stiletto. There's blood on it, too. What? <laughs> What do we do with him? I don't know who our friend is. Let's get out of here fast. How can we? I'll knock the driver out. You can drive, you idiot. Get up and drive. Yeah, yeah. You know something? You all right? Yes, Tonto. Where's the coach? We see two men. One stay inside. Other drive coach away. If we move fast, we can head them off at overhanging rock. Now, you wear mask? Yes, Tonto. It's a symbol of justice I want Von Baden to remember. The paper, Miss Dexter. The paper, please. And may I remind you, I have no compunction whatsoever about killing you for it. Oh, Peg, please give it to him. He means it, Peg, you must. I'm sure he means it. Well, Miss Dexter, since you prefer to die... Hey! Wait, Baron. You win. Now you're behaving sensibly. I hate to have shot you. Well, in which obscure place did you secret your precious document? I'm afraid I wasn't as clever or original as Miss Prynne and my sister. It's in my shoe.
fine, this one, Kimisabi. Ladies, all right? After what we have just been through, young man, your mask doesn't scare us a bit. And if you come one step closer, I'll whack it right off your face. Can't say that I blame you, ma'am. <laughs> you wouldn't take advantage of an old soldier, would you? Oh. <laughs> How's your father? Much better, thanks. But he wouldn't be if it hadn't been for you two. Girls, girls, we must hurry. We'll miss the stagecoach. Oh, my. Are we starting that all over again? I don't think you'll have to worry this time. The sheriff has assigned two deputies to escort you to Kansas City. Oh, are they, are they good looking? One have long black beard. Other have wart on nose. Oh, dear. Are you sure you can't escort us? Afraid not, Miss Bonnie. Tano and I have business elsewhere. Come on, Tano. Adios. For once, I agree with you, Bonnie. I wish they could escort us. He's so handsome. What I could see of him, I mean. And now he's gone, and, and I don't even know his name. Oh, fiddle-dee-dee, -dee, child. Even I knew that. Didn't you see his silver bullets? He's the Lone Ranger. Hello, silver! Oh. 